Welcome to the Get Stoked Podcast with Paul Stokes. Life lessons learned on the water that you can apply to everyday life. Now, here's Paul. Hey everybody, Paul Stokes here with the Get Stoked Podcast where we talk about life lessons on the water that you can apply to everyday life. We try to tell some stories and tie it into some value that um, hopefully you can learn from. And really excited today to have with us Keith St. Ange. How you doing, Keith? Hey man, thanks for having me. This is good you're doing this. Uh, yeah. Interviewing all kinds of cool people out there. It's been a lot of fun, you know. I've, I've got to interview a lot of Hall of Famers, and of course I believe you're a future Hall of Famer. <laughs> So uh, it's been amazing, actually. So Keith, uh, most of you probably know, he's an amazing world-class barefoot water skier, has been for many, many years. We uh, first met out of early to mid-90s, actually early 90s. Yeah, 93, and, uh, 94, Okehele, right? Okehele, yeah. yeah. And we certainly uh, competed to get on the team early in those early years, and you made it, and I didn't. <laughs> And, uh, you helped me make no. it though, because I trained with you for a couple weeks in Texas. We did. Uh, Keith lived with us, uh, my wife and I, for a summer, and we trained for a good part of the summer. And we've always been great friends, and uh, kind of been in that world um, the same amount of time. Keith yeah. stayed, and I kind of moved on a little earlier, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But Keith uh, has been held every world record in barefooting at one time or another. He has won, been a champion in all the elite events that there are. There's racing, the damn to damn race, the most elite race there is. Yep. Footstock, a couple of times champion, which is by far the elite figure eight endurance competition. And then you're talking nationals, you're talking worlds. Um, I know you competed in the X Games, but that one was a little short-lived for everyone to get a yeah, championship at that yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Had it stuck around, you certainly would have oh, been. I wish, been I wish it would have. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we have Keith here today to talk about a few things and tell some stories. And one of the things that's happened most recently with Keith is that he has transitioned out of being a full-time barefoot water skier, whether it be coaching, training for competitions, courting sponsors, and he's kind of moved on. And uh, so tell us a little bit about that uh, next step you're taking, Keith. Yeah, you know, I mean, I did the, uh, the ski school for, you know, 21 years. And, wow, uh, that long. Yeah, that long. It's been, it was a long time, and it was, just, it was just time for me to move on, and I was just burnt out. I was burnt out on the business and being in the boat every single day. And don't get me wrong, I love being in the boat. I love it. Teaching, but every single day it just just got old. I, I needed to move on. So uh, yeah, I just sold my shares to the rest of the guys at the WBC. They they still got it going good and added a couple new businesses to it. So they're they're kicking butt down there. But um, but for me, I just it was time to move on and, and find something new. I'm, I'm doing real estate full time now. Uh, thanks to Smallsy, David Small kind of got me involved in that, and uh, that's been going pretty good. And doing some flip houses and some investment houses and stuff like that. So that that's been good. But. Uh, you know, one of the lessons that I probably learned from that more so than anything is uh, is make sure you always have a second passion. You know, you think you think you love something so much, and you think it's never going to die out, and you're always going to have that passion, and you're always going to only want to do that. But I came to the point where I just I didn't. I lost that passion, and I wish I kind of would have had something else to fall back on. You know, whether it would have been um, whatever business related or maybe just another physical activity. I've always wanted to get into like uh, riding bike on the. On Road and stuff like that. And, oh, really? and little th yeah, I've always liked that. Like the Lance Armstrong days, I followed him a lot, and that was pretty cool. I really, I really pumped me up and motivated me in my skiing career. But um, you know, now I guess the big passion is my family and spending time with them. So uh, moving on from the ski school is giving me more time with them. Well, that's amazing. And I know you shared that you still love to go out on the boat and spend time skiing with your family. Oh yeah. It's just not that hardcore training. And people find it hard to believe. I remember when I was coaching a lot, and I would tell people that, you know, the boat starts to feel like an office, and yeah. you really kind of, once you're done with lessons, the last thing you want to do is go out in the boat to train. You're like, get me out of here and put me on some dry land. Yeah. And uh, some, I, of my, some of my best memories, actually, was just this last fall, after I moved on from the ski school, we would go out in the boat, my wife, two, two little girls, and we would just ski. And the sun was going down, it was warm out, the lake was glassy, and I was on this freeboard ski. 
uh, that Don Buffa made for me. Oh, and sweet. I was just cruising on this thing, cutting out in the glass, going 22 miles an hour with this huge smile on my face, just going, this is amazing. It's soul just, turns. Yeah. I love yeah. soul turns. Soul turns. Yeah. And just that, all that weight off the shoulders, you know, having to train, having to get ready for this and this and this and all these different commitments, gone. gone. Felt so good. Gone. What's amazing, I know what you mean, because this last weekend I actually left the tournament a little bit early because the weather was perfect and my family wanted to go out on the sure. lake. And um, to me, that's gold, being in the boat with your family and experiencing that water time. Um, water skiing is such a unique sport in that it puts a family in a closed space. Right. You know, kids don't even want to be on electronics because they're experiencing just being on the boat and being on the water and I think they, it's they can't run away yeah <laughs> they're, they're stuck right there it's just really good quality time for families and it's such a special sport in that way there's not many activities you can do that are like that as a family oh, for sure so. I mean look where we are tonight we're at the Rock Aqua Jays uh, show ski site with them practicing behind us I'm doing a clinic here uh, this week and uh, see we're still always gonna be around skiing. We still yeah. love it. It's in our it's in our blood it's in the blood um, And we, we wanted to set it up so you can watch a little skiing while we we're talking. Yeah <laughs> So yeah, obviously I know my dream and I'm sure yours is is to one day be teaching grandkids how to ski oh, yeah. and being on the water with them so um, Well, that's a great lesson um, that you shared a little bit there with having another passion um, you definitely want to cross train and, and create other interest in your life and don't dive so deep into one thing that that's, you lose focus that there's more to life than that. And you know something I've been hearing a lot since, uh, since I left the, the, the business that was, that was my bread and butter and, and my life for so many years, everyone's been telling me how much they don't like their job and how they're burnt out and how they wish they had something different to do. So true. And I can't believe how many people tell me that. And uh, so I guess it's not just passion related, it's work related. Whatever job you have, make sure you always have something as a backup or something you might enjoy or something you might just want to learn about. Have that sitting there just in case because you're sitting in the office all day and you just don't want to be there anymore. Start start looking, start being prepared before that, that time comes. Yeah, don't wait till you hate going to work every day. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So another thing we talked about that um, we wanted to share today is how there was a certain point in Keith's career where he was coming through that age, he was kind of moving from teenager to adult, he was living on his own, and he started to get some bad habits, whether it was you know, not eating the best, or do, starting to do a little bit of partying, and um, he saw that that was not going to get him to the goals that he set out to get to, and had some challenges, so tell us a little bit about that experience and how all that went down. Yeah, I think that was probably in 2000, 2005 you know um, you know unfortunately as much as we love water skiing you know people we like to drink and have a good time once in a while and when you travel you kind of get caught up in that and I did and I'm from a small town and sometimes during the winter the only thing to do up there is drink and have a good time with your friends and I carry that over and I carry that over uh, too far especially for being a professional athlete um, I think that you should be balancing it but yeah and I never I didn't eat good I mean I ate fast food and pizza I, I love pizza pizza still love it to death I, I kind of uh -huh. I go on that every once in a while. Um, and then, I mean, I, I, admit, I admit it in my book, Gliding Souls, I smoked, um, smoked cigarettes, I chewed tobacco. Stupid, I mean, it's just stupid. If you can't control yourself into not doing something like that, that substance has control over you. You have control in your own life. And, and I remember I was doing a clinic in Waco, Texas, at Aaron York's place. Okay. I didn't want him to know that I was chewing tobacco and I ran out. And when I ran out, um, I'm like, I can't ask him to bring me to the store and buy this. He'll, he won't like that. He'll look down on me for that. Right. And uh, I was like freaking out that I didn't have a tin with me. I was freaking out. I'm like, okay, I got a problem. I'm gonna stop right now. And I, I stopped cold turkey. Wow. Right then Good and there. You. And then I said I'd never, never put a pinch in the lip again. And I, ne and I never did. So what happened when I went through that that whole stage is uh, the one thing I had not accomplished in my career that I. I set out to do since it's the age of 13. It was my dream was to become a world champion, and uh, I came this close to packing it up, moving back to New Hampshire, uh, getting a job in the local paper mill or, or in town, and just been moving away from Florida just because things just weren't really going. The ski school wasn't busy. Yeah, I was winning some national championships, but that world just keep, kept on eluding me. Um, so yeah, I said, you know what? I'm changing everything. I'm going to start working out. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to stop 
uh, chewing tobacco like I did and, and, and no more smoking and I did all that cold turkey I did not drink a, a drop the whole year wow my buddies good for you. The, my buddies gave me so much crap but it was so it's worth not it easy. and yeah. uh, and sure enough I went to that next world championship in 2006 and uh, and I won won the championship the overall title I won uh, I did a world record uh, in tricks in every round one two and three um, and then one slalom and did, did what I had to and jump and won my first overall title. So the, wow. the, the commitment was, was so worth it. And, and the thing is it changed me as a person, it changed my lifestyle, it changed, uh, changed many things. I learned a lot about myself, I learned about, a lot about food. You know, why are you going to put something in your body if you don't know what the ingredients is in the food, you know? So you got to be careful what you put in your body. Well that's amazing. I'm so thankful that you didn't give it up and that you made those changes. And um, it's really inspiring to know um, that you can do it. And I'm actually, believe it or not, going through a similar thing this year myself. I, uh, there's a it's cool Burpa line. line. <laughs> so yeah, apparently Keith has some advice for me at Footstock, but uh, we, uh, I've this year. My whole career, I would say that I never fully committed where I needed to from an exercise and fitness and diet perspective to be the best I can be. I have no regrets and I, I don't, you know, looking back, I've enjoyed my career, but I can honestly say I never gave it all to get, and I should have, yeah. at different levels, at different, coming into certain tournaments. It is hard to give it all. I trained and I did a good job, but I didn't do the best I could. Right. And, this year in my quest to win footstock I've, I've i've done it all you know yeah. i've journaled about it i've hired a nutritionist i've been working with a nutritionist i'm working with a fitness uh coach that's writing workouts for me to key on the areas that i know i need to be strong in so uh i'm curious you said you had a little bit of advice for me on footstock, <laughs> yeah. so let's hear what you yeah. have for me. All right, a little life lesson. This is just something that was taught to me by Swampy, of course, and my father years ago, because we heard, not that you were trash talking, but we heard a lot of trash talking. We heard a lot of, uh, we call it diarrhea of the mouth, you know, people that say a lot but never actually do it. Um, and the one thing they taught me was to always let my skiing do the talking. Yeah. You know, you don't have to always tell people, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, because this is the thing. They don't remember that you said that if you don't win. You know, they just don't sure. remember. You can say it all you want, you know, but if you don't actually back it up, nobody even remembers that. Now, if you do win, oh, now they remember it. Now you're, you're, you're like, wow, hey, you yeah. called it and you're going to do it. So the big thing is, and the thing that I've, I was always taught is just, you know, just you can make goals for yourself and tell yourself, hey, I'm going to win footstock. This is my goal. I'm going to win it up. But when you come out and say, like someone to me, like I was your motivator, right? And you yeah. laughing in oh, your yeah. face, like, yeah. I'm going to win footstock. Yeah. I wasn't laughing at you saying that you weren't going to win footstock. I was laughing at you. Oh, yeah, you at... were. You were like, oh, ha, ha, that's what you said last year. Well, you did. Yeah. <laughs> See? But, right? Yeah. But the thing I is. got close. You, you, you got really close. Um, and you have a big, a great shot at it this year. But the thing is, is just be careful what you say and how you say it because, you know, you can just simply let your skiing do the talking. Yeah. It's true. You can. So there's a few reasons that I put it out there. One is. Motivate yourself. When you, when you do make it public. You hold yourself accountable. You hold yourself accountable. Yeah. Two, if you watched episode one of the Gisto podcast, you can you hear me talking about how I'm teaching my kids that I have this goal and I'm putting this plan in place and I'm executing this plan to make this goal become a reality. So there's a little bit of mentoring my kids sure. through the process. Yeah, that's great. Um, I guess you could, but you, it's, you could it, probably say that my goal is to win push dog, but I don't know if you want to go around to everybody and say, I'm winning it. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not necessarily going and doing that. <laughs> I, I'm not doing that. But I, I am, uh, I, I'm pretty confident and uh, I'm saying it in the right spaces. <laughs> okay, good. But it, 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 maybe you could call it trash talk. <laughs> like, well, you should have seen Brody Mesker's reaction when I told him. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. He wants yeah. to win bad too. Oh, he does. And he was out last year, but yeah, I'm sure he's going back hard yeah. this year. No, that's going to be fun. I was thinking about not doing foot stock this year, but now I think I might have to. You're going to have to do it, man. Because I don't want to just. I hope Fleck does it too. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't know. heard. So we'll I, I've heard he's coming back because they're going to induct him into the Hall of Fame, so he's going to be there. He says he's going to drive, but we know we know Peter, right? If there's a five dollar cash prize, oh yeah, it, 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 he blanks money. Sometimes. Yeah, he blanks money. <laughs> yeah, so maybe he'll be anyway. in it, Brian. It's, it'd be good if he was here. It's always a tough competition. It's going to be a lot of fun. So 
Well, anyway, thank you for sharing those stories, Keith. It's a pleasure to have you as a guest on the podcast. Thank you, thank and, you, uh, Look forward to seeing you at fun competitions, and I'm um, glad you're still out doing at least a few clinics and sharing all the wealth of knowledge that you have. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you again at different times in the future. It's Absolutely. hard. It's hard to give up. You give it up for a little while. I yeah. took uh, eight years off before I kind of came back to play with it again. So yeah. I think the big we'll thing see. I have is just like I told myself I'd never go for a barefoot jump again. You know, yeah, and I did, that's, I've kept that. That one hurts. That's hard in the body, yeah. <laughs> when it goes smooth, it's not bad, but when it goes bad, it goes really bad. Yeah. And even the tricks, you know, I mean, last year at the World Championships, I skied the best I ever had in my, in my whole career. Um, but, and I didn't even fall many times during the season, but just doing all those tricks and those combinations, the same ones that I've been doing for years and years and years, the same turn for the, the toe turn, the hips and all that, I was sore just from training. From making them. And I, yeah, yeah from yeah. doing them. I wasn't even falling. But yeah. anyway, yeah, I yeah, know. I'm still going to be involved in water skiing and still enjoy it with the family. And uh, oh, I'm on the U.S. show ski team this year, too. There you go. So there, that's Isn't something it? new. So yeah, I right guess on. I'm not totally out of it yet. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Keith. And we'll catch you later. Stay stoked and pass the stoke. Thanks for listening to the Get Stoked podcast with Paul Stokes. You can contact Paul at ontheballpaul.com. We look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, stay stoked.